Hello everyone, I'm Vikram P. Maduri here. Um, welcome to JH of Tech and in this session we're going to start a new chapter, chapter 2 on density estimation in the machine learning which is one of the most important topic. So I try my level best to make this concept as interesting as possible for you all to understand in a easy easy terminology. Okay, so let's start with the density estimation now. And uh, this chapter, you know, we'll be discussing about uh, the various topics related to density estimation as well. So I'll just basically take an example of, uh, uh, say, something like uh, we just have gambling example. So just assume for uh, for a few minutes that you are a gambler who actually are playing a gambling game, and uh, you observe that no matter how many times you have tried, uh, say, let's say you have you have uh, you know played with the dice for almost 100 times but you see that you you happen to get six only 11 times so you feel that you know there is something wrong and you know you you, you don't exactly remember the number but you feel that there's something is wrong so let's get that into more technical stuff and let's analyze that particular scenario wherein you have this dice so let's say we have one two three four five and six other various various things that we have in the dice and in this like uh, we actually whenever we are playing so we are supposed to get each of them uh, at least for one sixth of time so if you have played it for six times each one of them should appear at least once so if you have played it for 12 times then it should be something like um, by six it will be two times so each one of them should appear each one of these options should appear at least two times when you have played it for 12 times so i hope this concept is clear for you now let's take it forward uh, into the technical stuff uh, now the limit theorems assume you are uh, and like you know we are we are doing a gambling now so as it happens it is you are an unlucky day and among the 100 times you toss the dice you only see 6 11 times so 6 is appearing only uh, 6 has appeared only 11 times so for a fair dice we we know that uh, each phase should occur with equal probability that's 1 by 6 hence the expected value over uh, 100 draws it to 100 by 6 which should approximately equal to 17 so which is considerably more than the more than the 11 times that we observed so before carrying fall you decide that some mathematical analysis has to happen in the order so the probability of seeing a particular sequence of m trials out of which n are 6 is given by 1 by 6 to the power n into 5 by 6 to the power m minus n moreover there are m n is equals to m factorial by n factorial into m minus n factorial so different sequences of 6 and not 6 with propositions n and m minus n respectively so hence we have we may compute the probability of seeing a uh, 6 only 11 or less where so where so the probability of x less than or equal to 11 is equals to the sum of uh, you know sigma i is equals to 0 to 11 probability of i is equals to sigma i is equals to 0 to 11 of 100 i 1 by 6 to the power of i into 5 by 6 to the power of 100 minus i which will approximately equal to 7.0 percent after looking at this at this figure you decide that things are probably reasonable so in fact they are consistent with the co co convergence behavior of a simulated dice in in figure 2.1 we are going to discuss that here so in computing 2.1 we have learned something useful the expansion is a special case of a binomial series so the first term uh, would be a uh, six <clears throat> So here in the diagram, we'll see that the convergence of empirical means of expectations. So from left to right, empirical frequencies of occurrence of obtained by casting a dice 10 times, 20, 50, 100 and 200 times, 200 and 500 times respectively. So first time we play for, with the dice with, for 10 times, then we play with the dice for 20 times, then with 50 times, 100 times, 200 times and 500 times respectively now note that after 20 throws we still have not observed a single six in in this particular scenario if you see here and event which occurs with only 
5 by 6 to the power 20 which is approximately equal to 2.6 percent of probability now counts the number of configurations in which we uh, we could observe i times 6 in a sequence of 100 dice throws so the second and third term are probabilities of seeing one particular instance of such a sequence so note that in in general we may may not get cannot be as lucky since we may have considerably less information about the setting we are studying for instance we might not know the actual probabilities of each phase of the dice which would be a likely assumption when gambling at a casino of questionable reputation so often the outcomes of the system we are dealing with may be continuous valued random variables rather than binary ones so the possibly even with unknown range so for instance when we're trying to determine the average wage about the questionnaire we need to determine how many people we need to ask in order to obtain a certain level of confidence so to answer such questions we need to discuss limit theorems so they tell us by how much averages over a set of observations may deviate from the corresponding expectations and how many observations we need to draw to estimate a number of probabilities reliably so for completeness we will present proofs for some of the more fundamental theorems in 2.1.2 uh, they they are useful albeit non essential for understanding of the remainder of the book and and may be omitted so here if you see to get a reasonably correct kind of a answer you should be doing it somewhere around you know uh, somewhere around uh, you know 200 iterations or you know say maybe 500 iterations or say something like 100 iterations at least so we get a considerable equal uh, you know average you know uh, analysis after getting that many kind of iterations so when you do it with 10 or 20 and you conclude something it might be completely wrong the 2.1.1 fundamental fundamental loss is what we're discussing now the law of large numbers developed by Bernoulli in 1713 is one of the fundamental uh, building blocks of statistical analysis it states that average over a number of observations converge to their expectations given a sufficiently large number of observations and given certain assumptions on the independence of these observations it comes in two flavors the weak and the strong law so the weak law of large numbers is something like denote by x1 to toward xm random variables drawn from p of x with mean mu is equals to e of xi into xi for all i moreover xm is e is equal to 1 by m sigma i is equals to 1 to m xi this be the empirical average over the random variables xi then for any uh, any uh, any value which is greater than the following holes something like m uh, lead, leading to li limit to infinity the probability of xm minus mu of mu less than or equal to uh, he implies so is equals to one so this is something which is the empirical uh, average so this is what we have for the random variables xi so now let's understand it with the diagram diagram here so the mean of a number of casts of a dice the horizontal straight line denotes the mean 3.5 this is a this is a horizontal red line that we have here the uneven solid line denotes the actual mean xn as a function of the number of draws so for example if you have done with a number of draws at 10 to the power of 1 so there will be a lot of variations 10 to the power of 2 it seems to you know stabilize a little bit and then 10 to the power of 3 it is more of you know uh, you get a clarity on the analysis so xn as a function of the number of draws given as a semi logarithmic uh, plot the crosses denote the outcomes of the dice so note how xn ever more closes approaches the mean 3.5 are we obtain an increasing number of observations so this establishes that indeed for large enough sample sizes the average will co coverage to the expectations the strong law strengthens this as follows the strong law of large numbers 
under the conditions of theorem 2.1 we have uh, the probability of uh, limit m leading to towards infinity and x m is equals to mu is equals to 1 the strong law implies that almost surely in a measure theory theoretic sense x m coverages to mu whereas the weak law only states that for for every every uh, every value the random variable xm will be within the interval mu minus mu minus u and mu plus u so clearly the strong implies the weak law since the measure of the events xm is equals to mu coverages coverages to 1 hence any value which is uh, you know around around mu would capture this so both laws justify that we have we make we may take simple averages example over a number of events such as the outcomes of a dice and the use the later to estimate their means their probabilities here we treat the indicator indicator variables of the event their variances or related quantities so we postpone a proof until section 2.1.2 since an effective way of proving a theorem 2.1 relies on the relies on the theory of characteristic functions which we will discuss in the next section so for the mom moment we only give a pictorial illustration of uh, figure 2.2 which we are going to discuss now so this is the picture that we are talking about in which we have the illustration where the where the probability of you know stabilizing the conclusion might be after some iterations once we establish that the random variable xm is equals to m to the power of minus 1 sigma i equal to 1 to m xi converges to its mean mu a natural second question is to establish how quickly it converges and that the properties of this limiting distribution of xm minus mu are so in the figure 2.2 that the initial deviation from mean is large whereas we observe more data the empirical mean approach is the true one now let's observe the figure 2.3 wherein we have the five instantiations of a running average over outcomes of a toss of a dice so now note that all of these converge to the mean 3.5 Moreover, note that they all are well contained within this upper and lower envelopes given by mu plus or minus root of ovarian var x into x by m. So the central limit theorem answers this question exactly by addressing a slightly more general question, namely whether the sum over a number of independent random variables where each of them arises from a different distribution might also have a well-behaved limiting distribution this is the case as long as the variance of each of these random variables is bounded so the limiting distribution of such a sum is gaussian this affirms the pivotal role of the gaussian distribution here the theorem central central limiting theorem uh, says that we have denoted by xi independent random variables with means mu i and standard deviation uh, 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 sigma then i then we have something like zm is equals to sigma i is equals to 1 to m sigma i to 2 to the power of minus 1 by 2 into sigma i is equals to 1 to m xi minus mu i so converges to a normal distribution with zero mean and unit variance so note that just like the law of large numbers the central th limit theorem is an asymptomatic uh, result that is only in the limit of an infinite number of observations will it become exact so that said it often provides an excellent approximation even for a finite number of observations as illustrated in the figure 2.4 so in fact the central theorem the limit theorem and the related limit theorems build the foundation of what is known as as asymptomatic statistics thanks for watching this video if at all if you uh, if you feel this 
video is good do share it with your friends it it might help them as well and do not forget to subscribe to our channel for getting future notifications and if at all if you're looking out for tradings you can contact us and below email id